Hello and welcome back to Sky Shrine, everybody. My name is now B. Charles. I think it's about high time for some slimy crimes in the Dragon City of Sky Shrine. Why is that? Well, we are here to serve the crown of King Tormax. And Demla's Storm Slayer has commissioned us to stamp out the dragons. Why are they here? We don't know. Apparently they think this is their land or something. Not according to the reign of King Tormax. Anyway, we are here to wipe off the plague of the dragons as much as we can anyway. <laughs> but welcome back. I am here. This is my level 60 enchanter. My name is Sarleon. I decided to do a run through of this camp and kind of give you an idea of what it's like going through a different int caster, namely an enchanter, and just show you how much easier this can be, just steamrolling mobs here. Kind of give you an idea, a different look at a different camp that sometimes I use when the other camp's busy or camped. Best just find somewhere different if your camp is camped. So anyway, we are just past the teleporter area so you teleport you go here you're met with what five or six wyverns and a shambling cube this is a great place to start for enchanters back here the reason why is the shambling cube that you are faced with that spawns in this area is usually significantly higher than the previous shambling cubes which you can get them green to dark blue. This cube, it looks like it's the lowest level that spawns here, so it's hitting for 138, which makes, uh, I don't know, like level 46. This shambling cube can spawn in a range from about 46 to 50, 50 being what is highly claimed as quote unquote super cube. Basically meaning that it's HP pool is ridiculous. It's got somewhere near 10k hit points, maybe more. And then it hits for 200, so it can quad for 200 with the torch. Highly dangerous, however, so it's a risk reward. You'll absolutely steamroll probably 15 wyverns, two worms, and five to six cubes and still have time for some tea and crumpets but I'm not going that route <laughs> this is obviously not super cube but yeah this is a very straightforward approach to the camp um, now if you haven't played enchanter it's very simple you just tash charm a mob sick it on other mobs slow that mob keep your pet hasted and victory which is what we got here but um, yeah these these fadars in this area there I think there's three green spawns and two dark blue spawns so they're a little bit lower but you can get some loot in this area too I've had a graders cloak which is nine wisdom 20 mana back plus magic, plus cold saves for my cleric drop back here and a Falagron staff, which I've shown in the previous video. So it's not bad for some just easy chill camping if you just want a little less profile spot you just want to set up. Hey, it could be easy to start too if you're a shaman for whatever reason a shaman wants to come here in solo. You can come here and solo. But, yeah, I mean, obviously I'm less stoked playing my Enchanter than my Necromancer. But, hey, not everybody enjoys, you know, different strokes for different folks. I, I love Necromancer. There's some people that love playing Enchanter, like, would die to play just Enchanter their whole EQ career. <laughs> and I'm not going to claim to be the best Enchanter either. I'm 
I've, I've acclaimed myself full charm lay, meaning basically a charmless hack or a charmless fake in French. I don't know. If, if you're French, you can roughly translate here what my last name actually would be in French, but that's kind of where I got it from. I had some rough patches loving up, so. But, um, all's well and good. You know, you you have some good levels, you get some bad levels, you get to 55 plus, and you are showing a completely different game from what you experienced previously. But, um, kind of keep strong here. You'll notice. Excuse me. My buff bar is nearly full with mostly self buffs. I think that's important for me soloing just so I get the best bang for my buck. And then also it's important, as all enchanters know, always keep Bedlam and Rune up. It gives you an extra, quite a quite a bit extra pull to work from. Not only does it damage absorb when you're trying to get your pet back under control on breaks, but it enables you to cast through. I don't know if I have anything to demonstrate that, but if you're getting hit and you got a rune on, as long as you don't get bashed, you don't get that push. You'll just hear the almost like it sounds like a boxer hitting a you know a leather bag or punching bag. But you can essentially just cast through spells. So while you're getting beat on, it's super helpful. Super helpful for getting back under control. But yeah, as you see here, this is a lot quicker than doing it on the Necromancer. Not necessarily as safe, but if you're a proficient enough enchanter, it can be safe enough. Alright, take down Siliz. Now that we've got this area cleared out, what I'm going to do is, as long as you've got Levitate enabled, you're buffed with it, I'm going to have my pet just kind of hang around there. Oh, let's get this guy under control. Um, can't remember if I or, uh, calmed him or not. Yeah, let's just wait for him to get out of the way. But anyway, have Levon. Fortunately, I got buffed with DMF, and you could just hit the top of this ramp. Yeah. Well, let's take him out. Never know, he might drop a sapphire. We could get lucky. But have Le Levon go to the top of the ramp, and you can actually let back down to the teleporter pad coming over, which where Nalgonor is. These guardians are under cons, so they're not terribly hard, but they still got that region, that zone-wide region that just makes them a little hard to take down. But you never know, could drop some armor, could drop some gems. Puny guardians. I don't know why the dragons instituted such weak guardians to guard the zone. I guess, hey, EverQuest in games, right? You need the easier mobs to start at the front and the harder as you go back. But it's just kind of weird. You look at the original cities and they're a lot better fortified. You got the insane town guards at the front entrance. No one's beating those guys up unless you're level 60. And even then they still give you trouble and they're the hardest um, they're the hardest guards until you get to the guild masters and those even your level 60 guild masters still tear you up. So I don't know. I don't get it. I guess dragons have their own <laughs> way about it. In any regards, let's take off from here. We've pretty well made quick work of the Fadars down here. We're going to go up this ramp and just teleport, or I'd rather levitate back over to the teleporter pad. And what I'm going to do instead, kind of get the drill. You know the route. 
Um, from here, I'm going to switch over. Let's meet back at Larynth. Now, this is where I started my first video, but if you go to the left here, there's actually another cube, Octvalek. He'll draw, or uh, rather, I don't know, I, cubes, it. The cube drops the same loop table that I had shown my first video, essentially from Tagria, so I've still had Winter's Fury drop here, I've had Spells drop here, I've had a nice Druid Necklace drop here that's like 8 Wisdom, 45 mana. So you get all the same loot table. Oh, had a break. Let's get that back under control. I'm going to root Octvalek and... Alright, there you go. Now your color shift's got a little bit of a range, so you don't need the mob hitting on you before it's in that radius. So if you can get them to stop a little bit before and time it, you can have some really good break control. But anyway, Octvalet can still drop the same loot table. It's green at 60, so even as a mage or a wizard, you can probably come here and do those mobs. It's going to be quite a bit terribly slower, but I've heard reports. I can't self-confirm, but... That one, Octvalek, and there's another one up here on the just the same. I think it's the same level. They both drop all the loot tables that I'm talking about. And this one. I can't even say that. Alright, let's take a look. Pole Hydrix. Pole Hydrix Valek. He must play guitar. But yeah, you go up here. This one's green. On even on Sarleon, sometimes I would just come up here and do Octvalek and come back and do it every 30 minutes. Could work. Never know. I've had loot drop, so there's an idea for magicians and wizards. And another mob over here, well, let's get this cube down, it's just kind of in the way. There's also a little higher statue mob we can take over here. He's about level 53. He's got the best chance, or I should say percentage of dropping loot that I've experienced in this little camp. As long as you can keep your cube under control, it's not a terribly difficult fight. So what you're going to want to do, make sure your cube's 100% at least. You're going to come back and get as much distance as you can, pull a Tash. Pull with a Slow. Sick your pet on it. It's going to resist Slow because it's higher. And he's temperamental. The statue's temperamental. Um, just go ahead and root it. Again, make sure you got that bedlam at all times, especially on this guy. He hits well over in the two, 200s, I think. Maybe like 220 or 230. So I've even seen enchanters come up. And what what the enchanter will do, you can charm this large volume statue with Boltrons. Just take it around and clean house with it. But... Um, that's not the case here. We're wanting it for loot, so. But we'll just keep on. What I suggest is keep on the dots. Even though slow is pretty significantly going to take down the large Valium statue's DPS. Your cube will still, it'll still take a lot of hits. So you're going to want to keep some dots up on the statue. You can probably, you, I, you can mez the statue, but. You're going to want to use a stun if pet breaks. But the dots just help out. It'll take down, asphyxiate will take down its, I think, strength and agility. So that's really nice. It's equally almost like cessation of core, but not as cool, not as much damage. Torment of Argly will just be some extra added DPS too. So this is a fairly long fight compared to the other ones we've encountered so far. 
if so if you're th if you're wondering what super cube is is like either fighting super cube or on the reverse having it charmed it's pretty similar to this large volume statue it could just take a it can take a licking and keep on ticking um, so right around 50 percent you're gonna want to re-slow um, make sure you keep those dots up and everything like that again really long fight since I've got enough mana I'm just gonna I'll, I'll just keep them up sooner or later something has got to give yeah let's just kind of speed this up <laughs> it's a funny fight so if you want to know how some of the enchanter soloing fights go well here it is some of the danger in enchanter soloing especially if you're fighting a mob with a ton of HP and just lasts forever it's not so much that the more time you're engaged on enemy the more chance charm is gonna break all right we got him in the run more than likely Root's not gonna stick so again he is stunnable just stun him that'll keep him locked down for a couple percent he's running towards the cubes so if the cubes engage is probably not a big deal but Well, let's um, let's be back here. We're on the big bridge again, and I actually had a Sky of Fury scimitar drop. That was very surprising. Um, even here on blue, they're still pretty well sought after by druids that don't have their epic, if you can believe that exists. <laughs> But on green, I'm sure that they're in quite demand, quite high demand. Really nice one-hander, main or offhand. Take a look at those stats. 1323, 8 wisdom, 35 mana, 7 save gold, 7 save magic. That's great, especially if you got a box tomb, bard, ranger, rogue. Yeah, you get the you get the hint. But um, let's finish up here. Even though the Shamlin cubes have a pretty good region, I wanted to also show you if if you're grinding at this camp for a while, naturally your charm pet is going to take some hits, and its HP is going to consistently go down. And the region, even though here it's about one percent a tick still not enough I wanted to show you all this is well known for enchanters that solo often but if you got a really good pet and you want to keep it rather than just recycling it for exp so to speak what you can do is you can have that mob what you'll do is you will pacify it and try to membler it Sometimes these, let's try it again here. The med spells have a small membler chance. So you're looking at, I don't know. Mesmerize has a pretty good one. I think it's about one in four, one in five chance. It's kind of struggling here, but you'll notice when the mob has been memblered, you can either leave it rooted or, or Mez it again. You notice the mob's been med blurred, or excuse me, mem blurred because their HP will go up 5% a tick. That's drastically quicker than 1% a tick. There we go. Nice. There you go. Nice and quick healing. So if you're ever looking for a quick way to heal back up, you're doing a long grind session, you just like to keep one pet. Sometimes there's super pets in around, around a zone and you don't have a cleric to complete heal. Boom, there you go, problem solved. Pet heals itself. Again, you'll wanna keep it 
mezzed lockdown i'm using just the three second or excuse me three tick mezz just because it was getting difficult for me to remember after a dazzle and such but yeah nice little nice little trick there well i think that'll do it for my guide here i pretty much showed everything that i wanted to show give an example of what this camp is like going through as an enchanter versus another class which you can just pretty much wreck everything here so no big deal a little bit more on the risky side well thank you again so much for watching for the conclusion of this video in particular i thought i'd show something i thought i thought i'd show some dragon versus dragon the best thing to do as an enchanter that is to pin kin versus kin brethren versus brethren that the, the allies which once were turn to darkness and begin to betray their own cause all for the glory of your own purse such is the way of enchantment but thank you all for watching I hope my guide was helpful for you in your quest here in Sky Shrine. And I think I'm really done. I think I'm really done with Sky Shrine. Well, maybe.